very, very nice to be here. Thank you for inviting us. We arrived on Tuesday afternoon. Jerome came to meet us off the plane and has looked after us very well. He's an excellent nurse. <laughs> <laughs> and we have been very happy to be in, in his care. We have seen a bit of your city and we think it is the most beautiful place on earth. To be able to wake up every morning and see the Alps. Wow. <laughs> we thought Scotland was good. Um, <laughs> we're very pleased to be here um, to talk to you about the tidal model and to talk to you about our work with the tidal model and we will also tell you a bit about the work other people have done with the tidal model. We have come from Scotland. You can guess that from my accent. <laughs> um, this is my tartan. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> it's called the Buchanan. Phil doesn't have a tartan. It's a bit jealous. <laughs> this, is, this is where we've come from. The red bit. It's called Fife. It's called the Kingdom of Fife. And it's a very, very old part of Scotland has a lot of history. Um, last night, um, Jerome took us out and when we got home to the hotel, we put the TV on and Braveheart was on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, how's that? <laughs> this is our bridge. We live, well, we actually live along here. Our house is along here on that side. But we look out on this bridge this is the River Tay. And um, maybe that's why we called it the tidal model, because we have always lived near water. And water is very important to us. We like the idea of the ebbing and flowing of water. Nothing is the same. So maybe that's why we called it the tidal model. Before we start, anywhere we go, we always do an acknowledgement. We have been very fortunate we have been invited all around the world to speak. Um, and everywhere we go, we always acknowledge that many people, both colleagues and people on the receiving end of care, have helped us clarify what we think is the meaning of good practice. Obviously, Phil and I have been in the care field for a long time, and the people are too numerous to mention by name. We will perhaps mention some people by name today and they have allowed us to do that. Um, but people have been very good to us. They have allowed us to use their stories in our work, and so we thank them all. This is where we start with the tidal model. This man, Robert Flaherty, well, you can see he was an explorer, a prospector, and a filmmaker many years ago. But he made films of people around the world who the world didn't know about these people, the Inuits, um, um, people, people in islands around the world. He, he went and made films about them and showed the world the way these people lived. And no matter where he went in the world, he said, in the end, it is all just a question of human relationships. No matter what country and people, no matter what language they spoke, it was all just a question of human relationships. We think that is very important for the work that we do and the work that you all do. Because in the end, it is just a way of how we get along with each other, how we rub along with each other, how you get on with colleagues, how you get on with friends, family. But most of all, it's how you get on with yourself. If you're at ease with yourself, people will be at ease with you. And for many of the people we have worked with, and I guess you work with, they don't get on. They don't have a balance. They don't get on well with themselves. And so they don't get on well with the outside world, or the world doesn't get on with them. So in the end, this is our starting point. In the end, it's all just a question of human relationships. If you know anything, about the tidal model, 
you'll know that it's all about story. Story has become very big now in, in the care field. Narrative. Um, we were at a conference uh, last month, a couple of months ago, about narrative. We call it story. The power of story. Everybody in this room has a story. Everybody you meet has a story. Your story has been written as you're sitting here. And today another page of your story will be written. Another page of our story will be written. We'll look back on the time we came here and spoke to you guys. So it's all about the power of story. We discovered when we go to conferences and, do, and, and hear other people do workshops, we discovered this a long time ago, all you hear often from professionals is they stand up and they tell you what qualifications they have, um, what they have done in their professional life. We discovered that we think we are not doing that now because we think the tidal model is a human model. It's about people. It's about relating to people. So we started off talking about ourselves as people. And this is a bit about my story. Not about me as a professional, but who am I? 50% Scottish, 50% Irish, through Celt. <laughs> this is a, a picture that I use. It's a, a photo of me and my father. My father's name was Jock Buchanan, and he was a coal miner. And I'm very proud of being a coal miner's daughter. My father died when I was 17 from the coal miner's disease, which is called in Scotland the black spit. But these were happier times. Um, my father taught me a lot. I guess he knew what it was like to be human. He never read a book. He never wrote anything. My mother always did all the writing. But he knew what it was like to be human and to work with other people. Well, I guess he had to. He was working underground. He had to be part of a team. And we think that is a lot like the work that we do and the work you do, because we think you have to work in a team. You have to have good team around you, the kind of work that you do every day. Um, and we think that's really, really important. And we were speaking about this last night. Um, this is a, a picture that I use as well. I never liked this picture. Um, I was about seven years old. I was coming home from school. And a man in the street was taking photos of children in the street. Now, I know what you're thinking, but <laughs> in, in Scotland in the, the 50s, that was all right. <laughs> anyway, um, my mother bought the picture and it hung on her wall. And when my mother died, I took the picture down and I said to Phil, I hate this picture. And of course, um, being psychotherapists, we, we sat and talked about this. Why do you hate this picture? And we had a therapy session back and forward. So I discovered I hated it because this was my mother's story about me. <coughs> my mother wanted a perfect daughter. And she saw this as the perfect daughter with the bow in the hair and tidy. And I never, ever felt like that uh, because I always had boys to play with um, and wanted to be a boy. So um, I hated this. But it got us thinking about stories that people tell about us as people. And if you come from families, you will know that families tell stories about members of the family. I have a sister-in-law who has five sisters. And every sister is something. One is musical. One is clever. Um, one is good at maths, one is, is, uh, one has, is a traveler, she goes away. And, but there's a story about each one of them that's set almost in stone. And we, dis we were talking about this and we thought, this is like what we do in services. We tell stories about people in our care. And sometimes the people in our care don't like the stories we tell, whether they're true or whether they're not true. They don't like the stories that we write as professionals. So this is, this, this is why I use this picture. 
This is my signature on the web. And we hope that you will write to us after today. Uh, we always invite people who we have spoken to to, to write to us um, and tell us about their work. Um, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget the way that you make them feel. And in services, we say a lot to people. We do a lot to people. But at the end, it's how we make them feel that's important. And we hope today we'll make you at ease today to be with us. And we hope we'll make you feel good. So, Phil. Well, if she's poppy, I must be Phil. <laughs> um, uh, we, uh, we celebrated our 50th uh, wedding anniversary uh, in July. Um, <laughs> we've, yeah, and we've, we've uh, been together uh, two or three years, uh, more than that. Um, so we do end up often, if we're given the chance, finishing one another's sentences. It's the, the Phil and Poppy Act. Um, yeah, I come from the same kind of background, um, half Scottish, half Irish. Um, definitely a mongrel. Uh, when we travel, as Poppy said, fortunate to be invited uh, all over the world, uh, you know, from uh, the north of Canada to uh, South Island and New Zealand. Um, and people always ask us, what is it like to be a, a Scot? Um, a real, true Scot. And we always say, well, there probably haven't been any real, true Scots for over a thousand years because we've been interbred. Um, with the Irish especially, uh, with the Scandinavians, um, and so we are, we are a mongrel race. But if any of you have ever kept uh, dogs, we've kept dogs all through our married life, um, we found the best dogs are mongrel dogs. Pedigree dogs that are specially bred are difficult. Mongrel dogs are much easier. Maybe that's just a way of saying what wonderful people we are. <laughs> um, and this is our latest um, mongrel dog, a rescued dog called Holly. That was the name she came with, and wearing uh, our Buchanan bandana. This is a picture of me um, when I was uh, uh, about three. Um, and um, my family dressed me up in somebody else's tartan. Well, I had a little kilt, but my family don't have a... Um, we don't own a proper tartan. Um, and I was taken to a studio to have this photograph taken. We realized, we used to show these um, pictures at the beginning of workshops just to give the audience like you a chance to relax before we started the serious <laughs> stuff. But when we talked about, well, these pictures, we realized, well, they were really important because neither of our families owned a camera. And so, a picture like this, to uh, mark my growing up, the family had to use a professional photographer. Um, and we realised that when our parents died, there was only a, maybe a little shoebox with half a dozen photographs in it. Uh, priceless. It's not like today where you have these smartphones. We don't have smartphones because we're not smart enough yet. Um, <laughs> we might get there at some point. But you have, you know, you have literally th thousands of photographs. Um, we saw a boy in the hotel the other day with his father taking a photograph of his breakfast. Uh, I don't exactly know what he's going to do with it. But, <laughs> um, but these photographs from our life, they, they represent something of the, the passing of the time of our lives. This is a photo of me when I was about maybe um, six. Uh, you can see it's a Scottish summer. I'm wearing a <laughs> scarf and gloves. <laughs> uh, on my tricycle in the street I grew, I grew up on, uh, taken by a neighbor who had a, obviously had a, a camera. What's important about this picture is we went to visit someone um, just down the end of that street round the corner. Uh, maybe two years ago, and um, the street has changed. Uh, the houses are still much the same, but the street is now full of cars, because everyone has a car. Uh, but when I walked down that street, I could remember what it felt like to be that boy from 65 years ago. And 
that's what this story represents. Poppy was talking about her, her picture representing her mother's story of her. This picture for me represents what we would call felt memory. Um, my body has, has uh, reproduced itself umpteen times over the last you know, 70 years. But somehow I'm still carrying within me that memory of what it felt like to be that boy uh, in that street uh, all those years ago. The people you work with carry these felt memories. Some of them are good, some of them are not so good. Uh, that's what you spend a lot of time actually working with. Um, some experience that people will know about but may find very difficult to actually articulate, to express in words. In Scotland we have a saying, we're all Jock Thompson's bairns. Um, you can get it now on, on tea towels that you use in your kitchen and on oven gloves. Uh, it basically means we're all the same under the skin, you know, as Shakespeare said, you know, uh, scratch us and do we not bleed. Um, we are all the same under the skin. It goes back to uh, Robert Flaherty. Um, we have had the privilege of talking to people all over the world, and as Poppy said, uh, they, they may look very different, they may dress very different, they may have different customs, but at some point you reach the realization that eventually you're all talking about the same thing. What it is like to be human and connected to other humans and connected to the world. That's what unites us. Scotland, uh, this comes from a, uh, we thought it was a, just an apocryphal expression, but um, we discovered there was a, a minister of the Church of Scotland in Edinburgh called John Thompson. And um, he used to talk about the people who came to his church um, as his children. Uh, and when people, if you went to John Thompson's church and I said to you, what church do you go to? You would say, I'm one of Jock Thompson's bairns, meaning one of John Thompson's children. And I think that's to do with that, the family of humanity. We all belong to the same humanity. And it's an important thing to remind ourselves because there is no us and them. This is something that is artificially created. It's divisive. Um, try, try telling President-elect Trump that. Uh. <laughs>